Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and we have new bookshelves. They are freshly arrived and assembled and not a moment too soon. Because our current shelves are bursting at the seams, there are books piled all over the place. It's actually quite chaotic. I've been trying to hide it from viewers of my shelf videos, but it was getting bad. And not only are they book stacked any which way, but there's a big stack of new arrivals that I have not yet opened because honestly, I didn't have any place to put them and they're safer from damage and dust if they stay in their packaging until I have a place to put them, which I do now. That stack of books was also the subject of a poll that we conducted recently on our community tab. Side note, if you're not aware of our community tab, check that out on our channel homepage. It's a new thing that we've just unlocked. I mentioned it in my previous video and I've already conducted a couple of polls and today's video and the next one, I believe, are going to come out of the polls conducted over there. So head over there to not just vote in polls, but give me suggestions, recommendations and have general discussions about this channel and about comics. So getting back to what I was saying, we conducted a poll over there asking if people are interested in unboxings. I did mention that I'm personally not sure of what the value of unboxing videos are, but I'm willing to learn and uh, get to know from people if they would like me to do some unboxings. And the majority of people said, yes, let's go for it. But there were also some valid points raised by people who didn't think that it was something that we should be doing. Then there was obviously the logical choice of make different kinds of videos and people will choose. So I'm going to attempt something that's going to incorporate all of this. Rather than do a whole bunch of unboxings, I'm only going to do one. I'll make it an unusual book that I choose to unbox and I'll try and focus on something that makes an unboxing worth watching. So what we're going to look at today is this book over here, which is unusual for many reasons, not only for its large size. This is a Marvel superhero comic book and I like superheroes, but they don't make up the majority of my reading. I would say about 20% of my total collection is superhero comics and a lot of them from many years ago. Recent reads in the superhero genre do take place, but they're few. Of course, many of my favorite comics as regular viewers of this channel will know are superhero comics. And this right here is a very special edition of what's called the Galactus Trilogy by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, along with other stories by Lee and Kirby, but also by Buscema and John Byrne. Of all the stories collected here, I've only read the first three, so this is going to be new reading as well as a special edition, both for me. One of the main reasons I'm picking this book for the unboxing is because I want to share with you, or I want you to share with me, the tension that I usually feel when unwrapping big books. If they're not carefully packaged they sometimes arrive damaged or at least with the corners dinged and then there's always the question of whether it's going to be as great as you expected with something this size when the printing isn't good for example or the binding isn't good or the paper selection hasn't been good it can be a little disappointing however if they get things right it can be pretty breathtaking so since i have no idea how this is going to look i invite you to join me in our very first and i promise not very regular grand unboxing all right, so the bubble wrap is on the outside, which I think is better. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe some packaging experts can tell me if it is better on the outside of the cardboard or the inside. I usually find bubble wrap on the books to be not that effective. At least in books that have been damaged, I've never seen it to do much good. box seems to have taken some damage over here or just the previous label has been scoured off. Uh, yes, that's the case in the top corner as well. So there's definitely previous labels that have been taken off this box. Oh, I can tell it's going to be this way. Aha. This corner is ding. That's the first thing I can see. Doesn't seem to be torn, but it's a pretty bad fold. The spine seems to be okay on first glance, as well as that one is this bottom right corner that seems to be badly beaten up. And that's a shame. But I was almost expecting it given how weak packaging is these days. The book is still shrink wrapped though. And this Alex Ross cover, if I'm not mistaken, looks magnificent. Here we go, collecting Fantastic Four 1961, 48, 49 and 50. That's the original trilogy introducing the Silver Surfer and Galactus. Then 74, 75, 76, and 77, the follow-up by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. 120, 121, 122, and 123. And then 242, 243, 244. All of these written by Stan Lee, with 120 to 123 drawn by John Buscema, and 242 to 244 drawn by John Byrne. Now for the plastic wrap. And 
And so there we go. It looks, except for this bottom corner, to be in great shape. It is a real shame about that. I'll try and depress that in a little bit, but there's not really going to be much I can do about it. And here's a look inside. And here I think I've got a little bit of a problem with the shine of the pages reflecting these lights that I have on. I can say that the colors are beautiful. The page is absolutely white. And Kirby's artwork is immediately on very impressive display. What's also really nice is it smells like it's just come off the printing press. I think you can tell that the lettering is really well sized. It's very easy to read and you can see that the bold primary colors are standing out really well in this reproduction. Here we have the beginnings of the cosmic stuff that was to evolve into a Kirby trademark, the scrolls. Oh, can you hear? Pages are crackling being opened. The dent in this corner unfortunately continues all the way up to here, page 21 and beyond, but the rest of it seems pristine. It's been a while since I've read this comic, but I'm sure it did not look this good. This artwork anyway resembles photocopied photographs, so I don't know how well that would have reproduced originally, but it definitely looks remastered or retouched at least over here. There's the first appearance of Galactus, very different from what he would look later. And then the cover of 49, which is the back cover of this edition. These full page illustrations look really impressive at this size. Even over here, a page this size being just four panels. Well, this large format is obviously very impressive and the colors, the paper, the printing, all looks really good. Of course, this is the kind of artwork that you're really getting this edition for. The beginnings of Kirby's space and cosmic stuff. Okay, so, so this is the first trilogy. This is number 74. This is the part of the book from which I haven't read. So that's quite a thick book actually, about 15 or 16 issues in this edition, with seven of them being Kirby. Bold color reproductions. With this you definitely get the feeling that almost every page could be a poster or a pinup of some sort. I guess I must be spoiling these stories for myself, so I'm gonna flip through quickly since I haven't read them. Then the Busema stories. And then the John Byrne stories. Oh, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Daredevil. I'm really not that familiar with John Byrne outside of the Man of Steel series and of course the first volume of Hellboy. But looking at these pages, I, I find the art so recognizable that I'm sure that I read many more John Byrne comics in my childhood than I uh, remember or registered his name for. And this looks pretty good. I was going to say, just glancing through this, it doesn't have the impact of the Kirby blown up to this size, but but it's still very impressive. I think it's just hard to compete and right on cue here's a full pager to compete as it were. And I think that's all this edition really contains. I don't think there are any extras. Oh wait, I was wrong. They seem to be some covers. So it says Marvel's greatest comics reprinted Fantastic 448 to 50. Essential Fantastic Four Volume 3 trade paperback 2007 collected 48 to 50 and more. So these are the covers of various collections and reprints of the stories in this book. The cover of Silver Surfer trade paperback 1992. Again 48 to 50. I guess 48 to 50 has been collected a number of times. Wizard Ace edition of 48 with various cover artists. This is the cover of the Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 2, 48 to 50, wouldn't you know it? Marvel Masterworks Volume 5 Fantastic Fours, again, 48 to 50. I I'm guessing it's one of these trade paperbacks that I read these stories originally in. I, I borrowed it from a friend, I don't remember. They might even have been three issues reprinted. Some original art and pencils. 
more pencils from Jack Kirby, and more reprint covers, this time of Marvel's Greatest Comics 56 to 59, which reprinted the stories from issue 74 through 77 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And finally, the covers of some trade paperbacks. All in all, a very handsome edition. I'm obviously unhappy about that dinged corner and I'll see what I can do, but the rest of it seems great. It is going to be a little difficult to store, but we'll see what we can do. Of course, I realize now that the choice of this book to unbox in celebration of our new bookshelves is completely inappropriate because this book is obviously not going to fit on either one of these shelves. Maybe if I put it up on the top of the shelf somehow, but then I'll have to figure out a way to keep it covered. For now, it's going to be joining the rest of my massive tomes inside a cupboard until I have a proper shelving solution for something this size. I hope you enjoyed our first unboxing. Leave me a like to let me know. And as always, I'd love to have your comments, questions, and suggestions below. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.